Hello again, welcome to yet another episode of the Grigosophy channel. My name is Tam and today it's our fourth and final part of our four part series on how to read and pronounce Greek correctly in just a single day. It's been a very hot day in the United Kingdom as you can see, so apologies for that. Without further ado, let's go! the final episode is here upon us. It's been a while, apologies for that, uh, but today it's going to be the longest of all four episodes and the toughest. Uh, so once again, if you haven't seen the first three episodes, it is very important that you do. I have put the links below in the comments section, uh, so you have to start from the very first episode because unless you know what you're doing, uh, what letters you're seeing, how to pronounce them, you're just not gonna be able to, to watch this episode. So, what can you expect in today's episode? Well, uh, you've already know now, or hopefully you do, how to uh, read and properly pronounce uh, a Greek word just by seeing the letters. Today, I'm just gonna show you a specific combination of two letters that when you see them together in a word, you pronounce them differently, okay? Um, it is quite a challenging episode today, that is why it's so long. Uh, it may take a little bit of uh, time to get used to it, uh, but don't you worry, plenty of examples take it at your own pace. Uh, it's important that you keep your pause and play button on the ready, because with every example uh, I'm going to be asking you to pause your video, have a thought about the word you see, try to pronounce it in your mind and then press play so I can explain you. So, what am I waiting for? Let's begin. Hello and welcome to the fourth part, therefore, of our series. Um, now, today it's going to be quite a difficult part. It's the most difficult of the four parts in the series. Uh, and therefore, uh, I'm not going to go uh, through the pronunciations of each letter uh, as detailed as in previous series. Uh, so, therefore, I'm expecting you that by now you have had the chance to um, see the first three episodes, uh, play around with your uh, notes uh, and therefore uh, you are now hopefully able to look at the Greek word, know how each letter is pronounced and be able to pronounce it. Uh, okay, so I am now going to go uh, to how you pronounce certain combinations of letters because they are pronounced differently. Uh, also, there's going to be a lot of stopping and starting uh, in this episode because uh, once I show you the combinations and how they're pronounced, uh, I'm going to be showing you a, a lot of uh, screens with different words. Uh, so it is important that once I bring up one of the screens, um, you see the word, uh, you stop and pause the video uh, before I start analyzing the pronunciation. Uh, you have a go as to how you pronounce it. And once you feel confident that uh, you have managed to pronounce it correctly, then you press play again uh, and you see uh, whether the pronunciation you gave it is correct or not. So without further ado, let's begin. Now, oops, uh, this is the first um, of the, um, of the uh, photos. Most of the photos here relate to the actual word. So in most of the photos, but not in all of them, the word describes what you see in the photo. Uh, and I will tell you the actual uh, word in English at the end. Uh, but before you pause the video, it's important, first of all, for me to show you what combination uh, you're going to first learn uh, and how it's pronounced. Uh, and then I will tell you, you can pause now, then you pause it, and then you start it again. So the first uh, combination we're going to see is these two letters, the letter gamma and the letter kappa. Uh, now, as you know from previous uh, videos, if you see the letter gamma, you pronounce it g as in yellow, and if you see the letter kappa, you pronounce it k as in kit. Okay, so you will be correct in thinking that if I saw them in this word, I will try and say k, k. 
However, that is not actually the case, because if you see this letter together in a Greek word, they're actually pronounced G, as in get and go. So these two letters in capital, or one of them in capital, or both of them in small letters, they're always pronounced G, as in get and go. Now, there are some other grammatical uh, things that, you know, if you learn uh, the Greek language in, in, in more detail, uh, you need to know, uh, but I'm not going to go into detail. All there is to know in very simplistic terms uh, in order to be able to pronounce this word and this combination is that if you see it, it's pronounced G as in get and go. So therefore, I will now tell you to pause your video, uh, have a go at this word, and then press play once you think that you know how it is pronounced correctly. Okay, let's see. Now, as I said, I'm not going to go again letter by letter like in previous series. I will show you the pronunciation written in Latin with a, an example in trying to, to pronounce it. So, let's start. As I said, this combination, G, and then R, E, GR, GR, M, O, S. Because the tone is in the letter O, Omicron. Uh, it's this particular syllable that is going to get the emphasis. So altogether, gremos, gremos. It's like saying gremos but without the Y. Gremos, gremos. And gremos is a cliff. Okay, second word again, similar combi combination. So at this point, please feel free to pause your video and have a go at this word as well. Okay, let's see. We have letter A, and the emphasis will also be on that letter. G, which is our combination, E. So, A, G, A, G, R, A. Altogether, A, G, R, A. As if he's saying lag in Iraq, but without the L and the K. Lag, Iraq, A, G, R, A. A, G, R, A. Which is an anchor. Okay, let's go through the second combination of letters, and it's this one here. Now, we know that this is letter gamma, as before, when you see it, it's pronounced G, as in yellow. And if you remember in previous series, I said that if you see two of the same letters together, you only pronounced one of them, as if it's just one. Uh, well, with this particular combination, that is not the case. So, if you see these two letters together you actually pronounce them again G, as in the word get and go. Okay, similar to the previous combination. So have a go at this word, press pause, and I will tell you how it's pronounced. Okay, let's have a go at it. So, first letter, F, E, then our combination, G, so FEG, A, where the tone is as well, so fega r i altogether fegari fegari fegari, which is the moon. Let's see the same combination again. Let's have a go. Uh, press pause and have a go at this word. Okay, let's have a look. Again, the tone, the emphasis on the first letter. So we have A, G, E, A, G, A, G, L, O, S. So A, G, L, O, S. A, G, L, O, S. It's like saying agar and los. That they are A, G, L, O, S. A, G, L, O, S. Which is an angel. And as you can see, angel without the O, S. A, G, L, O, S. Moving on to another combination, and it's about those two letters now. The letter mi and the letter p, not mu or pi. Uh, again, from previous series, you knew, or you should know by now, that letter mi is pronounced m, as in man, and letter p is pronounced p, as in park. So, normally, before this episode, if you saw them together, you would try to say m, p, m, p, m, p. Um, pretty close. If you see them together, they're pronounced B. 
uh, which if you think about it, if you try to, let's say, split the uh, pronunciation B in two letters, it will be M and P, M, P, B, B. Uh, so again, if you see these two letters, you pronounce them B as in Bob and But. So press pause and have a go at this word. And let's see it now. So, B, A, L, A. Emphasis on this syllable. Bala, Bala. As in Kabbalah, but without the K. Bala, Bala. Which is a ball. Uh, let's try it again. This combination. Uh, press pause and have a go at this word. And let's have a try then. So we've got k, a, b, a, and the emphasis on this a in the middle. So kaba, kaba, n, a, kabana, 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 which is a bell. I hope by now you are getting to grips with this pronunciation. Uh, with these pronunciations of the combinations. Okay, next one. It's this combination here. Again, if you remember, if you saw the letter ni, it's pronounced net, uh, n as in net, and the letter tsaf is pronounced t as in top. So again, before this episode, if you saw them, you would have tried to say n t, n t. Pretty close. If you see these two letters, they're pronounced D, as in door and dig. And again, if you think about it, trying to say the, 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 the sound D, it sounds as if you're trying to connect N and T. N, T, N, D, N, D. Okay? So have you got this word, and I will tell you the pronunciation in a minute. Okay? So emphasis on this e, p e, p, d e, pede, 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 in pet and then pede, pede, which is number five. Okay. Same combination here. So uh, have a go at this word as well. And because a little fellow is waiting here, let's not keep him waiting for long. So we've got P, O, D, E, emphasis on this E. So por di, por di, K, E, por diki, por diki, pod and iki, por diki, which is a mouse. Bye, little fellow. See you later. Right, next combination of letters, it's this one here. A tough and a sigma. As I said before, the tough is pronounced t as in tip, and the sigma is pronounced su as in c. So from previous episodes, you would have tried to say ts, ts, ts. Uh, you're very, very close. If you see these two letters together and look how many combinations, because if you remember, the letter sigma is written like this when at the end of a, of a word, uh, it's pronounced ts as in fits and bits. Um, you might wonder, well, why do, you, why do you tell us that? You know, that's how it's normally pronounced anyway, but you know, instead of trying to say, uh, I, I will tell you in a minute. Uh, have a go at this word and let me know. Okay, let's see the pronunciation. So we got emphasis on this letter, so P, E, P, and then t, and then a, pizza, pizza, which is obviously, <laughs> I don't need to say what it is, it's pizza. Uh, so this is how pizza is written in Greek, and it's pronounced the same as in the English language. Um, but yeah, um, the reason I, I gave you this uh, combination as well is sometimes you would have tried to say pizza, 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 no, it's t, pizza, pizza. Uh, let's try it one more time in this word here. Have a go at it. And let's see. 
Now the emphasis is on this syllable here. So we have k a t a so katsa katsa v i and this letter is pronounced v as in then i. So altogether katsa v v katsa v v katsa v v katsa v v which is a screwdriver. And I think, if I remember correctly, this is the final combination before we go into the world of vowels. This is the final combination of uh, uh, is it consonants. I have a, a bit of a brain freeze right now. Um, so, again, the letter taf is pronounced t as in tip, and the letter zeta is pronounced z as in zoo. So, if you had tried to pronounce them separately, it would have been tz, tz. However, if you see them together, they're pronounced z, as in kids, bids, not, it's, it's a d and like a z after bids, kids. So have a go at this word. And I will tell you now how it's pronounced correctly. So we've got z, a, k, i. Emphasis on this letter, zaki. Zaki, 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 which is the fireplace. Let's have another go in this word, and here's the combination again. So have a go at it and press play when ready. Okay, slightly difficult word this one. So we have f and l, f, l, f, l, as in flow. Uh, e. Here, sorry, so we've got flea and then z and a. So the, the emphasis here, so flea za, flea za, and then n i. So all together, flea zani, flea zani, flea zani, which is a cup. Quite a difficult word for just a cup, but that's all. That's what happens when you try to learn Greek. Okay then, uh, let's start with combinations uh, with vowels, okay? Now, we start with this particular combination, letter Omicron and letter Y. Now, if you were trying to pronounce them separately, letter O is pronounced O, odd, and letter Y as E, ink. So, you would have correct up to now, um, you have been correct if you have tried to say oi. However, in a Greek word, if you see them together, they are pronounced u, as in lu and zu. U. So have a go with this word. Okay, let's see. So we heard ku, u, ku, n, e, and this is where the emphasis will be. Cune, l, i, cuneli, 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 which is the rabbit. Now, something to remember as well, I, I will explain to you further down this uh, video, but I might as well uh, give a bit of an introduction. Now, if you see them as I said together, you pronounce them as u. And the same applies if the emphasis, if the tone, would have been in the second uh, letter. Okay. However, there are occasions where you see this combination and the emphasis will be on the first letter. In that case, and only then, will you pronounce each of the two letters separately. So if the emphasis was on the letter Omicron, above here, it would not have been U, it would have been OI, OI, the usual pronunciation. Okay, but I will explain this more uh, further down. Uh, let's try same combination um, with uh, this word and press pause. Okay, let's see then. Now, as I said, if the tone is in the second letter, you still pronounce it as U. Okay, so we have A, L, E, A, L, E. Ale, 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 if you're a Liverpool fan. 
and pu u pu. <laughs> okay, so all together, ale pu, ale pu, which is a fox. Okay, uh, it may be worth pausing right here and have a quick cup of coffee or a rest because we are now entering into a more difficult territory where I am forced uh, to give you a couple of rules on a pronunciation, okay? So press pause if you like, uh, otherwise if you feel brave enough and you're ready to go, let's start. Now, if you remember from previous episodes, there are three letters in the uh, 24 letter alphabet, in the Greek alphabet, where if you see them, they're pronounced E, as in feet. And those, uh, sorry, letters, those letters were letter eta, letter iota, uh, and letter y. However, there are also three combinations of vowels that if you see them together, they are also pronounced as e. Okay, so we have six instances altogether that if you see something of one of those instances in a Greek word, it's pronounced e. So I guess it's easy when you try to read and pronounce a word, but it's difficult when you actually try to write to know which one of the letters or combinations you have to write. But that is not your problem. You're uh, learning to read and pronounce you, on this uh, uh, video. You're not learning to uh, write. So, let's see those combinations then. This is the first one, the letter epsilon with the letter iota in all its forms. So that is also pronounced E. Then the letter omicron and the letter iota. And then the letter y and the letter iota. So if you see these two letters together, they're also pronounced E. However, let me just go to the next screen. Um, this is where it gets tricky. There are also instances where you can see the combination of those letters, but you don't pronounce them as E. So there's two instances. Okay, The first one I have already explained. So if the tone is in the first of the two letters. As I said before, with the pronunciation of U, if the tone is on the first letter, you pronounce each letter separately. Let's see a couple of examples. So, you see, the combination of those two letters normally would be E, uh, the pronunciation. However, because the tone is on the first letter, you actually pronounce them separately. E, E, A. Okay, not E, A. Uh, same here, because the emphasis, the tone, is on the first letter, instead of pronouncing it E, you pronounce this combination OI. OI. Okay? And the second instance where you will not pronounce them as E is when the second letter has dialitica above it. Now, I couldn't find how dialitica is, is um, what's the uh, translation of dialitica in English. Uh, so I will show them instead. These two dots above the letter is called dialitica. It's like the German umlaut if you uh, know German. Uh, so, again, if you see this combination, you will normally pronounce it E. However, if there's two dots above the second letter, you will again pronounce them separately. So, OI. OI. It might confuse you, because if these two dots uh, were not there, and there was a tone instead, then you will still pronounce it E. But if you see these two dots, it will be OI. Right then, so press pause and try and pronounce this, letter, this word first. And let's see if you have managed to pronounce it correctly. Okay, let's have a go then. Uh, it's pretty much an easy one here because you, there's no tone on the first letter, no two dots on the second letter. So, this combination will be pronounced E. So, the whole word K, L, E, Kli, the, this letter, the, sorry, I've written a letter D here, my mistake, it should be that. It's a the, the pronunciation, not the, the, and E, with the emphasis on the second syllable. So, altogether, Kli, the, Kli, the, Kli, the, which is a key. 
Okay, let's uh, have a go at this word here. I'm not going to say anything, press pause and have a go. Okay, I didn't say anything because uh, I wanted to make sure that you understood that you are looking at this combination. If you remember, this is one of the three combinations again that I pronounced as E. There are no tones or, or dots above here, so it's a straight E. So to pronounce them, A, with the emphasis on A, A, N, E, and this is pronounced X, if you remember, as in taxi, and E. So altogether, anixi, 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 which is a spring, spring. Not a spring, sorry, <laughs> it's the season, spring, okay? Okay, now, let's see if you can pronounce this correctly. Okay, so again, we are talking about this combination which without any tones or any uh, dots it's still pronounced e so the correct pronunciation will be e o s with the emphasis on o eos 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 and eos is a sun the sun okay let's uh, have a go with this word here Now, on this particular occasion, as you can see, we have the dialetica, the two dots, above the second letter. So this is a combination that we would normally pronounce as E, but because of those two letters, we will have to pronounce the, each letter separately. So, let's start. Th, as in theory, th, e, because we're not pronouncing them together, th, i, th, i, k, o, s. Emphasis on the O, so altogether, theikos, 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 which means divine. Now, as you have most probably noticed, I, I will stop from here onwards to even try and put some combination of words in order to help you with the pronunciation, uh, and this is to make you even more. Um, uh, determined to uh, pronounce them correctly without actually, you know, those words. Uh, so from now on, you're going to get the Greek word, uh, the help of the pronunciation, and the translation in English. But let's have a go at this word. Okay, again, if you've noticed, we have the combination of these two letters, which normally would be pronounced as E, but this time we have a tone on the first letter. So again, we will have to uh, pronounce each letter separately. So we have R, R, O, L, O, E. And the emphasis will be in this letter here. So all together, R, rolling R, Roloi, Roloi, Roloi. Okay? Which means a clock or a watch. It's the same word in Greek, whether it's a clock or a watch. Okay, then. That was with regards to those combinations. Now, there are also combinations of two vowels that, when seen together, uh, it's pronounced as E, as in get. And combination, actually, of one. One combination. Sorry, not more than one. One. So, up to now, we had the letter Epsilon in the Greek alphabet that is pronounced as E when you saw it. However, we have the combination of these two letters as well, the letter Alpha and Yota. And when you see them together, they're also pronounced E. And let's see a few examples. But before that, uh, I will remind you in a similar uh, uh, thing that... Even though that combination exists, there are also uh, rules that if you see it, you will not pronounce it as A. And those rules are exactly the same as before. So if the tone is in the first letter, the letter alpha, you will still have to pronounce them as two separate letters. So for example, 
you see the combination, but the tone is on the first letter. You will not pronounce it as E, you will pronounce them as I, I. Okay? And again, if the second letter has the dialetica, the two dots above it, you will again pronounce it as I. So you see here, you will pronounce it I as well. But let's go and see some examples. Have a go with this word first. Okay, so this is where it gets tricky for you with all these rules, and that's why I said this is the most difficult of, uh, of, uh, of the series. So this is our combination. Now there is an, a, a tone, but it's on the second letter. Okay, and therefore we still pronounce it as E. We would pronounce it separate letters only if the tone was in the first letter. Okay, so we have S, I, M, E, our emphasis, E, A, Simea, Simea, which means flag. And have a word er uh, this. Okay, I was meant to say have a go, but uh, I think you understood uh, what I meant. Right, so again, we have our combination here. There's no uh, tones or any dots, so a pretty straight E pronunciation. So we've got P, O, V, as in then, O, so PO, THO, and then S, F, S, F, E, PO, the sfe r o ro. The emphasis or this omicron, so it's at the second C level. So let's try. It's a long word, I know. Po the sfero. Po the sfero. Po the sfero. Which means football. Now, if you are an American, uh, I will insist that the sport that you're looking here, it is football, it's not soccer. As you can see, the first letter is foot, which, there we go, foot, feet, and a ball. You're using your feet, your foot, to kick a ball. No hands allowed. So it is a football, a sport. Right. Uh, have a go at both words. And I will explain why <laughs> I have used uh, this particular example. Okay, then. I have used this particular example because it's a funny way to understand and be careful when you pronounce uh, Greek words uh, because uh, misunderstandings can lead to uh, uh, you know, serious or funny situations. Now, as you can see here, these words are identical, okay? The only, even, even the tone is in the correct letter. The only difference is that on this second word, there is two dots, okay, um, above this letter. Now, obviously the combination, or our combination, is this one here, these two letters. And you will see here that because they're not tones or anything, this combination will be pronounced as E. However, in this word, which is identical to that, because of those two dots, you will not pronounce this combination as E, as e but as I. So, let's see. So, our first word, you will go P, E, V, A, P, DA, emphasis on THA, K, I, A, PEDAKIA, 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 pedakia. However, despite the similarity of this word, you will pronounce this as pa, not p a pa i dakia, not pe, because of these two, pa i pa i pa i dakia. So the first word will be pedakia. The second word would be pa i dakia, not pedakia. Paidakia. And therefore, if you were not very careful, <laughs> you will go to a Greek restaurant to order lamb chops or chops, and you end up uh, asking for a portion of small children. 
and quite <laughs> understandably weird okay so be very careful uh, when you see the combinations uh, uh, this is a very good example there are other words as well similar in that you know just by adding this to there they the whole word changes and you end up saying something completely different to what you intend to okay okay then again I think this is definitely a time to have a quick break because what we're gonna do after this is the most difficult part of the whole series and I mean it even if you're Greek you will need to pay a lot of attention to this so have a quick break and come back when you're ready okay Okay, then I hope you had a good break. We are entering the final part of uh, the series. Uh, only two combinations to go, uh, but they are, I guess, the most difficult to get to grips with. Um, I would say that even if you're Greek, uh, most probably most of us do not even remember the rules of those pronunciations. Uh, we just got used to them and when we see them, we know the correct pronunciation rather than, you know, checking to see if it applies or not. But I will tell you uh, exactly what I mean now. So, the first of the two combinations is with the letter alpha and epsilon in all its forms. Okay, now, um, when you see this combination in the word, uh, you can pronounce them in two different ways. Now, you pronounce them as av, not as a e, but as av, av as in savvy. If they're followed by a vowel, so whenever you see this combination of two letters in a word and they're followed by vowel, then they are pronounced av, not i, av. Or, <laughs> and this is a difficult part if they're followed by one of those letters or combinations of letters. So I guess this is the most difficult part in the whole series to be able to remember this combination of letters uh, so you can pronounce this combination as AV. You can save your screen, you can uh, pause it and write down these combinations because we're gonna have a few examples down the line. However, you pronounce the same combination of letters as af, as in af, Africa, af, not av, when, if followed by letters not mentioned earlier. Pretty easy. Uh, so you only need to worry when you pronounce them av rather than af. And the last of the combinations is letter epsilon and epsilon one together and the same rules apply so instead of a you pronounce them you pronounce the combination as ev as in bev if the combination is followed by vowel or by exactly the same letter and combination of letters as before Um, if it doesn't make sense, uh, you will get what I mean by that. Now, however, any other combination of letters, and instead of F, you pronounce this combination F, as in ref. Okay, same rules apply. 
So, let's see how you go with pronouncing these two words you see on your screen here. Pause your screen and come back when you're ready. Right then, let's have a go. Two letters, sorry, two words, and pretty much identical. The only difference is that you have the third letter is different. And it's this difference that causes this combination to be pronounced differently. But let's see what I mean by that. So, this word, the combination, is pronounced af, not I, not um, av, but af. T, I, the tone here, af, t. On this word, instead of af, it's pronounced av. And this letter g and this letter i, av, ye, av, ye. And why you pronounce this as av and not af, if you remember, if followed by one of those letters and they have it, this combination is followed by letter gamma, g, and therefore is pronounced av, ye, not af, t. The letter taf is nowhere here. You see, if the letter taf was in this combination, z, so if this combination followed that, then that combination will also be pronounced av. But a letter t on its own, letter taf on its own, is nowhere here, here, so it's af. I hope it made sense. Let's see another example. Oh, sorry, forgot to say. So afti means her or she, and avyi means dawn. Now, I'm going to leave you this <laughs> rule at the bottom, and you can have a go at this word here. Okay, let's have a go. Now, again, this is our combination, and let's see. Is there a letter sigma anywhere here, or the combination of sigma and tough? No. So by that, we know that this combination is going to be pronounced af, as in Africa, not av. So, you see, af, s, t, r, <laughs> af, str, str, as in straight, for example, af, str, a, l, i, a. The tone is in this letter, so altogether, af, stralia, af, stralia. Australia. And probably by now you guessed it, it's Australia. So pretty much same close pronunciation. It's only the this part here that instead of Australia we go af Australia and we give the tone to this part, not this part. So Australia in Greek is Australia. Australia. Okay, have a go with this one here. I have been a bit cheeky, uh, and I didn't tell you this particular rule. Uh, so I hope that some clever guys and girls from you remembered the rule we said in the previous vowel combinations. Uh, what happened when the tone was on the first letter rather than the last letter? And if you remember, the tone, if the tone is on the first letter, you don't pronounce as a combination, but you pronounced the two letters separately. And the same applies here. So instead of saying af or av, we say i, i. A, i, p, n, i, p, n, os, i, p, nos. I, p, nos. Okay? Which means sleepless. I tricked you be there, I didn't put it in the rules because I, I, I thought that most probably it's going to make it a lot more complicated. You already knew the this rule from the previous combinations of vowels, so I thought by the time you saw that, most probably you would have guessed it. Uh, okay, so remember at the beginning of the series, in part one, I said to you that hopefully by the end of the series, 
you're going to be able to read all these signs here. Well, the time has come for you to have a go at them. Uh, and I realize that there are some of them that are written in capital letters, all capital letters. Now, the difficulty that you will find with capital letters is that capital letters don't receive a tone. They don't receive a tone above them. Only if it's the first letter, if the word is written... Is, oh, sorry, let's start again. If the word is written in Greek and the first letter only is in capital and the remaining letters are small, then it can receive a tone, the first letter. But if a whole word is written in capitals, there is no tone. And the problem with that is, <laughs> since you're not Greek, if there's no tone, you are struggling to find where the emphasis will be in the word. So to help you with that, I have actually transformed all these words uh, in capital in small letters. So we will start with this word here. This is the word in capitals. So you will definitely be able to pronounce each letter and combination of letters, you know, as you have learned so far, but you will struggle to see where the emphasis will be on the pronunciation. So I'm going to help you here. And this is the word starting with capital, but in small letters. So you can see the emphasis is on the letter A. Okay, so I'm going to bring it up here and I will give you some time, press pause, to try and pronounce it. Okay, let's see here. Quite a long word and as you can see, most probably, there are two combinations. This one here and this one here. So I hope that you kept your notes and you were able to see. But let's go. So. I've put here the background so we don't get confused with all the other words in the background. So we have E, N, E. As you can see, this combination is pronounced E. E, N, E, any. Then the next one, K, E, A. Kia, Kia. But because the tone is here, is Kia. So E, N, E, Kia. And then we have Z, E, T, and E. Because this combination is pronounced E. So slowly and all together we have we have enikiazete. 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 Which means to let or to rend. Right. Let's go on this one here. So this is the whole sentence, or let's say. It is a street name, obviously, uh, as you can guess. Uh, written in small letters. I'll put it at the top. So have a go at that and see what you come up with. Okay. Now, looking at the whole thing, there is a combination here, this one here, that repeats there as well. So this is the only one that you need to worry about. So let's start word by word. Let's start again. Odos, odos, and then elenis, elenis. And this was the difficult part. So we had the, then n, dun, dun, and then the again, the with l, dun, dul, dun, dul, and then a, k, i, aki, with the emphasis on a. So altogether, dunudulaki. So here we go. Odos elenis dunudulaki. Okay. And basically it means Helen dunudulaki street. Odos means street. And this is Helen in Greek. Elenis dunudulaki the surname. Helen dunudulaki street. Right. Moving here to one of my favorite Greek uh, singers. She's a legend, and I've written it all in small, so that was already written, but I put the emphasis as well. So there you go, that's her name, and the two words here. Have a go at it, and get back when you're ready. Okay, that is a pretty easy one. There is no combination, and those two uh, letters are pronounced as one. 
So let's go. M A R I Mari N E the emphasis then L as one letter. Don't forget A. So Marinella Marinella and these are same word basically. So I'm only going to do one of them. S T A Sta Sta L I A Lia with the emphasis on A Stalia Stalia. Now you could be correct in saying Stalia, but because in in, in Greek normally those two are going to go Lia rather than Lia, you, you sort of slightly pronounce that. So all together is Marinella Stalia Stalia. Basically, Marinella is her name. Stalia Stalia means drop by drop. A great album as well, by the way. And finally, this particular word, which if written in small letters is that one. So have a go at this one as well. And easy, again, there's no any specific combinations. So we go mi, mo, i. H, this letter is pronounced H, mich, a, i, l, and the emphasis on this letter here. So, altogether, Michail, 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 which means Michael. Okay, then, a few more words for you now to pronounce. So have a go at this one first. Okay, I've put this word because it has two combinations, as you can see here. And all of the both combinations are pronounced as we have already learned. There is an emphasis here, but it's on the second letter of the combination, so that doesn't change anything. So E, that is the first combination, E, M. E. That's how the second combination is pronounced. Ime. Ime. Which means I am. No, we haven't finished yet. <laughs> no need to tell you what that word means in Greek. You already see it here. But uh, have a go at it and then pronounce it first. Okay, now there is a combination here, this one here, okay, and let's start. It's F, now it's not EV, it's F, because this letter here, letter he, does not belong to the list of letters and combinations that if they follow this combination, it's pronounced EV, so it's F. Then H, A, R, E, F, H, R, I, and then S, T, O, emphasis on the last letter, F, H, R, I, S, T, O, most probably when in Greece you've heard it a few times, F, H, R, I, S, T, O, which means thank you. A little fella here. So, have a go at this particular word. Again, we have two combinations, this one here and this one there. And this time, because this combination is followed by a vowel, we don't pronounce it F, F we pronounce it EV. So let's have a go. So we have G, O, I, ROI, T, EV, ROI, TEV. E. Okay, so all together now, go i te vi, go i te vi. Okay, you got that right? Which means he, she, or it charms. Okay, charms. Very charming card there. Okay, then, uh, this is from a book, a cover of a book in Greek. Uh, it's from my favorite um, writer who's not Greek, by the way. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, basically go straight to the pronunciation here. Okay, let's start with this one. I I forgot this one, but let's start with this one. So this is how it's written in capital letters, and this is how it is written in Greek letters. Okay. So. Sorry, my mistake. This is how it's written in capital letters, and this is the second word. All right. So the first word, it's ts, because that's the combination. Ts a r l s Charles Charles, and then this one, it has this combination. Okay. D, it's pronounced d, i k e N S Dickens altogether Charles Dickens. No guess here who the writer is, Charles Dickens. Now I left it as capitals because on this particular world or a word there was only one vowel, so the tone and the emphasis was bound to be on this letter, Charles. On this one there were two vowels, so the combination the the uh, sorry the uh, emphasis would have been either on this or on that letter. But uh, <laughs> if you've guessed it right, that's fine. So have a go, or you must have already had a go on this one. Let's have a go. So we have O, L, I, Oli, V, I, sorry, V, E, R, or emphasis on O, Oliver, Oliver, and most probably you've guessed what comes now. T, U, that's the combination, U, I, tu, I, emphasis here, S, T, tu, East. So all together, Oliver, tu, East. Oliver, tu, East. And obviously, it's the book Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Okay, not long to go now. Uh, this is from an actual uh, sign outside a shop. So I've picked up these three words, quite difficult ones. So have a go as you see them right now. Have a go, press pause, and I will explain to them when you come back. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Now, there was one only combination, this one here. And because the emphasis, the tone, is on the second one, the second letter, uh, we pronounce it as E. This will be quite a difficult thing for you to pronounce. I don't know what my computer is doing there. Apologies for that. So, let's start. E. Then H. Then TH. TH, as in theory. So, ICH TH. ICH TH. Okay? ICH TH. Quite a, a difficult one. And then E O, E O, P O, so E C O PO, and then L E O, emphasis on E, altogether E C O POLIO, E C O POLIO, quite a difficult one for you, I know. It means fishmongers. Now, let's go for the second word. Again, same combination. We have K, R, K, R, E, O, CREO, P, O, CREOPO, and then same ending, LIO, L, I, O, LIO. So, all together, CREOPOLIO. Creopolio, which means butchers. And the last of the words, we have O, P, O, the two O's there. We have a lot of O's, as you can see here, and the same ending. So, O, P, O, O, P, O, R, O, P, O, O, P, O, R, O, P, O, and then Leo again. So all together, emphasis on here. Oporopolio. 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 
which means green grocers. Uh, I don't know, some of you might have also done this one. I haven't done it, but I will tell you here. It's apo, apo, to, 1950. <laughs> so it means from 1950. One more sign. Uh, I don't want you to do this one. Just try, have a go at this here, the two words. Okay, let's have a go. This is how they're written. So, first word, p a r a th as in then, o, so pa ra dho, and then s i a k a c a k emphasis on the last letter. So, long word, let's start, pa ra dho si a k Paradosiaca, paradosiaca. And the second word, pu ru o pro i o. Now this is the combination, and normally you will pronounce it i, but since the second letter has the alitica, the two dots, is oi. So pro i o. This is the emphasis. Quite a, a difficult here, pro yo. And this combination here, remember it's d a so altogether pro i oda, pro yoda, pro yoda. And altogether paradosiaka pro yoda, which means traditional products. Okay, I think we're getting close to the end. One last word I think for you. Have a go at this. Okay, let's write it at the top. This is the writing at the top. But I thought since you're going to go to Greece and you're going to look around and stuff, you might as well get uh, used to seeing these letters written all over. So, let's try. Letter PS, pronounced PS, A, R, O, PSARO. And then we have T, A, TA, V, E, V. And this is where the emphasis in the word will go. So, psarotave, and then r n a r n a. All together, psarotaverna, psarotaverna, which means seafood tavern. Now, the word taverna, taverna is tavern. And psarotaverna, if you actually pr um, uh, try to translate it word by word, means fish tavern. But because they sell, you know, uh, all seafood, uh, not just fish, I would say it's seafood tavern is the most accurate. So finally, we've reached the end of our series. So I'm hoping that by now, even if it took you more than a day, you're now able to see something written in Greek and be able to pronounce it correctly. OK, and you never know. Uh, sometimes, if you see a newspaper, etc., uh, and you have a Greek friend next to you, uh, start reading and see if he is impressed or if they're impressed or not. Once again, uh, leave any comments you would like to uh, make uh, below so we know how it went for you. Thank you very, very much for watching and see you very soon.